Hello everyone. Welcome to NASCOM Insights latest edition of Analyst Assemble. With the announcement of second quarter results of tech companies just around the corner, today we will chat with Apurva Prasad, Vice President, HDFC Securities, and here is expectations and assessment of the tech industry growth during the quarter. Thank you, Apurva, for taking time out to talk to NASCOM and welcome once again to our uh, chat. Thanks, Nirmala, and it's a pleasure to be back here. Thanks. Uh, I will quickly start with our questions. The one key thing that I would like to talk about first is about the headwinds that we are seeing currently in the industry. So uh, with macro uncertainty still prevailing around the US elections and geopolitical crisis, uh, issues of interest rate cuts in US, uh, what are some of the headwinds as per your assessment that will continue to affect the tech industry, particularly Indian companies in the short term? Right. So, I mean, there are certainly a lot of headwinds, many of which would sort of remain uh, things that have uh, been around. So, uh, a lot of it is sort of more of the same. So, whether it is uh, incrementally some of the labor uh, market data, which is weakened of late, and this is indicative of, uh, you know, uh, macros uh, could potentially slowing down relative to the resilience that's been uh, so far. Uh, the other piece, which has pretty much been... Uh, in line with how things have played out is enterprises continuing to prioritize cost optimization and margin enhancement uh, over net new spends in a big way. So, so which, which, which means that tech budgets are still not offering that much more room incrementally. So I think that's, that's another aspect which sort of uh, uh, to an extent remains a headwind. And of course, there is the, the, the geopolitics that continues to be volatile, you know, and, uh, we always see a risk of uh, you know escalation in some of those areas. So I think that these would be the primary uh, headwinds that are still there for the sector. Right, right. I know it is. Uh, there is not much change that we are seeing compared to the last few quarters. But if you look at the tailwinds, we are also seeing some positive impact of cross currency movement, uh, specifically due to the strong pound and euro vis-a-vis -vis US dollar, uh, US dollar for almost all the IT players in the second quarter. So, any specific details you would like to share on the cross currency impact? Also, uh, what are some of the other tailwinds that we should watch out? for in the coming a few quarters yes so i mean the from a currency standpoint the 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 plus and minus is both in the same point the fact that usd inr has been fairly stable in fact the volatility of usd inr is perhaps at a two decade uh, uh, low uh, so while uh, a three to four percent depreciation that used to happen in the past has come off, which is not great news, which is why I said there's sort of plus and minus. But of course, some of the cross currencies that you refer to, those have become favorable and will uh, support margins for some of the larger ones a lot more, which have got a bigger exposure into some of these currencies. But broadly, I think there are uh, uh, on the business side, there are a set of tailwinds that are also getting bigger. So, for example, I mean, the, the tech stack upgrade and the reduction in technical debt that continues to sort of uh, benefit from AI and you continue to look at banks that plan to retire their applications, whether it is City, Deutsche, I mean, those plans sort of continue. So I think uh, that will that will uh, remain a tailwind, big tailwind for the market. There's, of course, an element of uh, some pent up in core transformation, which, of course, is high priority. Now, so, so that sort of comes back. There is uh, generative AI and Accenture more recently spoke you know, at length about that. We saw how much of that could become an incremental contributor to demand. Uh, you know, so, so there are pockets where net new spend towards investments in AI is, is going. I mean, although more part of it is allocated uh, on the infrastructure side, but uh, we do continue to see big tech, you know, investing in GPUs, building data center, I mean, and it's famously said, one of them has said that the cost of underinvesting is a lot more than the mm -hmm. cost of overinvesting. So I think it's it's all in investment mode. Business cases are still sort of getting built. Uh, mm -hmm. And and from a, a, a domain point of view, regulatory compliance, cybersecurity, spends around that would sort of continues to inch up. So I think these are still sort of tailwinds uh, for the sector, uh, which have been around, but probably getting bigger. 
Yeah, and I think next few quarters we'll be able to see what kind of impact it's going to create, right? Larger impact, specifically for the Indian companies. Uh, when you look at uh, the verticals and geos, uh, which are which is uh, the standout vertical as per your analysis, and uh, you know where the discretionary spend is also picking up. Uh, we have seen in the last few quarters a uh, rebound in the BFSI sector, specifically in US and EU. So is this trend going to continue and are there any specific niche areas that you're witnessing these revivals? Uh, also in the manufacturing sector, specifically auto in EU, is facing demand weakness and this is particularly affecting our ERD company growth. Uh, so do you see a revival anytime soon and any color on which are the other sectors that can drive growth in the coming quarters? Sure. So I'll, I'll take the first part of, of that, Nirmala. So uh, uh, from a vertical standpoint, I think BFSI is looking to get better. So certainly parts of BFSI, there is improvement in decision making and approvals are coming through that much faster. And, you know, areas where there was a, a lot more scrutiny on projects, those are starting to ease out. And as is the case with BFSI, I mean, on both sides, it typically tends to react uh, ahead of some of the other verticals. So there are certainly pockets within BFSI, so be it uh, areas of capital market subsegment or cards and payments and mortgage. Uh, I think those are areas where things seem to be opening up. And the fact that uh, even if bookings intensity do not go up, just mm. the velocity at which you're converting deals to revenue, if that amps up, that itself could provide, uh, uh, you know, be some positives actually. So BFSI, I, I would say, uh, is getting better versus where it was a few quarters back, and certainly parts of that business. On the ERD side, yes, there are sort of, uh, 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 again, two things playing out, especially in the automotive uh, ERD space, because that's that's where bulk of the growth of the last few years has been. But there is a very clear slowdown uh, in the EV side, which is, uh, of course, impacting spends. Uh, but at the same time, a lot of it is to do with what is happening on the tier ones and auto ends. Where mm. it has come off, and and I think that's that's probably a direct result of OEMs taking greater ownership of software development. So as more of that happens, as there are more partnerships and alliances within the OEMs, what that tells you is that there is uh, still limitation in the supply of talent in that, as mm. well as you know the need for some of these OEMs to optimize uh, cost software development costs. So I think those are elements which will still be positive. So there are pockets of of even within ERD or OEM, which is continuing to do well. And then there are uh, areas such as the tier ones within that piece, which is coming off. Uh, net, net, I think that's still a, a stronger area of spend uh, on the ERD side. So I think that uh, as a pack, while that's de decelerated, transportation will still be on the higher end. And what about the discretionary spend? Is that going to come back? Or when do you see that picking up? Across yeah, so, uh, Yes. So, so you know, if you remember, uh, uh, at a similar point last year, there was expectations of a lot more rate cuts that would have happened in 2024, mm -hmm. uh, which did not, of course, play out. So I think uh, with some action on rate cuts, uh, how does that percolate into industries that are more leveraged, case in points being uh, communication, uh, which is relatively higher leveraged? And, and that's been impacted uh, one of the most within all the other verticals. So some of uh, the verticals such as this, uh, you may start to see uh, some elements of discretionary play out as the rate cycle uh, becomes more and more favorable. Uh, yes. Apart from that, of course, uh, parts of BFSI should also continue to do uh, better. But yeah, I think some of these events around rate cards, geopolitics, of course, which of late is, 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 is become... Uh, Front and center, I think how how that percolates will will be pretty important, and of course that that leaves us with the big event in uh, November. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, but but you know, I mean, a, a lot of these uh, are are elements which is should be seen as more as event risk, and mm -hmm. once these are behind, there is some element of spend that has been held back could start to come through. So so while you see the the slowdown of the past two years is mm -hmm. partly to do with the recalibration of the excesses that preceded. But there was also a lot more spend which was held back 
So, mm-hmm. so while a big part of it has got recalibrated, there is mm-hmm. a lot more which is spent up, which may start to come back, which is why we expect over the next couple of quarters, uh, things should start to normalize a lot more versus long-term trends. Uh, mm-hmm. Of course, I mean, uh, cognizant of the fact that Q3 is also the high for low impact, which which yeah. typically hits the sector. So I think those are some of the factors to also consider. Yeah, tying up to the same thing. So we have also seen the number of deal wins announced specifically by Indian IT companies in the second quarter has slowed uh, materially compared to the first quarter. And also we have not seen much me- mega deal announcements for almost two quarters now. Um, so in your assessment, do you see a revival in this discretionary demand and the deals post the U.S. elections and return specifically of mega transformational deals? Uh, we have seen some very uh, high percentage of deal signings, which we have seen recently, or also extensions of the current deals. For example, case in point, TCS, Primark, Rolls-Royce, HCL's, uh, Xerox deals. So how do you see this panning out? Yes, uh, very interesting point. So. Uh... There have been deal activity has been fairly strong. Uh, a lot of larger deal activity has been taking place in the public services segment in US, which is a segment where some of the global peers tend to participate a lot more as compared to Indian IT, right? Uh, but yeah, mega deals have come off uh, versus a year back the number of mega deals taking place. I think we're looking at a time where uh, the exact converse of what was happening a year and a half back would play out. So. So you're looking at an earlier scenario where deal wins were strong, but growth rates were receding because of deal wins, deals translating to revenue at a slower pace. Uh, the converse is going to start happening. But even if you don't have mega deals coming through over mm-hmm. you know, the next, so Q2, uh, I don't think any mega deal, major deal announcements happen. Uh, but uh, even if that sort of recedes in absence of mega deals, there is going to be a lot more uh, sort of under the hood things which will start to pick up growth, you know, so so just the translation of bookings to revenue is going mm-hmm. to be that much faster, which okay. will uh, improve the growth rate for most of the companies. Uh, uh, but yes, I think uh, the ask for some of the companies where dependence on mega deal was was high uh, will go up a lot more. So for example, if, if uh, in FY25, if the sector grows at 4% or so, a big part of that growth was coming in from the mega deals that were booked last year. Mm-hmm. And as you look into growth sort of beyond that, mm-hmm. the ask for some of those mega deals go up. So we're typically entering into a period where historically you've seen mega deal announcements coming through. A lot mm-hmm. of companies do indicate that there are you know, a lot of those in the pipeline, mm-hmm. but you know they seem to not be uh, as uh, uh, linear in terms of uh, how it gets converted. But hopefully yes. that should improve. And most of them continues to be your cost optimization deals that we are seeing currently, right? Absolutely. And shorter duration ones, yeah. Uh, moving into some of the operational metrics and hiring trends. Uh, so in the last few quarters, we have seen hiring picking up moderately from a very negative growth scenario that we had early in the year. Uh, also, we have seen many of the companies uh, committing to their uh, continued uh, fresher hiring in a similar pace. So uh, how do you think the whole hiring scenario will pick up in the second half? Also related to that, any key metrics, uh, operational metrics you think that will, you know, improve or have a positive impact in the next few quarters? Yes. So I think uh, from an operational standpoint, a lot of supply side metrics actually are quite favorable. Uh, so, for example, wage inflation is, is, is a lot less of a challenge versus the inflationary impact that it was having both mm-hmm. domestic as well as onshore uh, over the past two years. So that is normalized. We all know attrition are at uh, lower than sort of pre-pandemic levels. So uh, some of these supply metrics seem to be all right for companies, which could allow them to improve margins from here on as demand comes back. And there are a lot of levers which have been optimized uh, over the past many quarters. So subcontracting being being one, which most of the larger companies have optimized in a big way. But uh, my sense is that, I mean, hiring is going to improve uh, at a gradual clip, uh, fresher hiring particularly, and there are companies that have put out those numbers. Uh, a case in point out here being that not all of that is indicative of demand uptake. A lot of it is to do with companies which are at 
operating at relatively higher levels of utilization. So a lot of that is also some amount of bench creation versus meeting just the near term demand. So I think hiring should improve uh, for most of the larger companies, uh, as well as uh, some of the, the mid-tier companies who have started hiring a lot more freshers who started doing that. They're going to get back to that and sort of improve the pyramid because the pyramid structure got a bit distorted uh, post the excesses, you know, post pandemic. And which is why you look at uh, the cost elements is 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 there still room for that to sort of improve, uh, you know, so as you revert back to pre COVID pre pandemic growth rates, there is you can potentially still revert back to those kind of cost levels. So there is there's still enough room and and yeah, over the next few quarters, there is scope for margins to improve. Right, right. So I will actually, my last question is related to margins and revenue growth. So what is the revenue growth expectation for the sector in the coming quarter, according to your assessment uh, that you have done? And also, do you see a recovery for the industry in FI25? Uh, and in that aspect, uh, and I know last time we spoke a lot about the mid-sized companies, how they perform. Uh, how do you see uh, their performance compared to larger players in the coming year? Yes, so uh, uh, on the first part of your question, so growth for this particular quarter, we expect that to be uh, slightly above three and a half percent on a YY basis uh, and about in dollar terms and above 1.7, 1.8 percent on a sequential basis. So so think of it like this. I mean, uh, growth which bottomed about two quarters back, which was mm -hmm. closer to zero to one percent or so, and uh, that is headed to seven, eight percent normalizing over the next two to three quarters. We are sort of midway there in terms of growth. Mm -hmm. So you're at about three and a half percent or so. That's the kind of uh, growth levels where the sector is currently. Of course, there is uh, a lot of dispersion that continues. So there is a, a larger company which is at 5% positive. There is again a larger company which is at minus three, minus four percent. So that dispersion is still there. Uh, the aggregate is about three and a half percent growth rate, which is trending towards the seven to eight percent growth rate. So from a full year basis, the two and a half percent growth dollar revenue growth uh, for the companies under our coverage uh, in FI24 is going to four percent or so for FI25. And that moving close to about uh, eight percent or so in FI26. That's the uh, top line growth sort of trajectory that, that we have built in. Uh, on a question on the, the large versus mid, uh, so mid is going to be a lot more company specific factors which are driving that uh, with whole host of things around ERND that we were discussing earlier, which is going to be impacting different companies uh, to, to varying extent. Uh, but at the same time, there are some of the uh, margin related challenges uh, which have come in for certain mid tier companies. So I think that's also likely to play out uh, during this quarter. And, and and we're still into the period where wage hikes are yet to sort of happen for a lot of these companies. There are only a few companies that have already done that. So yeah. those are sort of headwinds for margins for, for most of the companies getting into sort of Q3 period, you know, ending Q2, Q3 period. So I think these are some of the important factors to be considered. Right. right. And anything... Um that we should watch out for in the coming quarter anything that you feel that will be a game changer for the industry that we have not covered yes yeah, so i think uh, like the largest company has been giving out a lot of uh, numbers in terms of the impact around generative ai uh, some mm -hmm. of indian companies have talked about the pipeline uh, it'll be interesting to know how that's converting to yeah. revenue uh, especially looking at uh, the global leader, the rate at which so think of all Accenture's growth came in, last year came in from from generative AI, and that's just uh, four to five percent of the deals that they end up winning. So I think that will continue to be the most interesting aspect. Uh, what how are the service providers dealing with GCC as competition versus partnering with them, and where is the sort of mean ground between the the, the two? I think that will continue to be very, very interesting. And of course, uh, uh, some of the the geopolitical and macro related factor will continue to have a bearing, especially because a lot of these spends are more CAPEX based, uh, uh, as is the case. So I think these, these are some of the important factors 
that will weigh in on, on the companies. I think, but uh, overall, if you see the industry compared to the status in the last few quarters, it's in a really positive frame, right? Right now, that's how we look at it. Oh yes. Uh, so 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 like I was saying earlier, growth rate. Uh, has bottomed for the sector very clearly two yeah. quarters back we are midway from bottoming out a few quarters back towards getting back to the long-term averages as a sector uh, mm -hmm. and maybe slightly longer operationally to get back to to that and of course with that there lies the uh, the bigger opportunity around ai uh, and what that's going to do to uh, the existing tech stack and the kind of upgrades required and mm -hmm. what that could do potentially with demand. So I, think, I don't think that's uh, the the upside of that is fully sort of understood and captured right now. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, as business cases get stronger, as the ROIs get sort of more defined, uh, that's certainly going to provide a major, major leg up for the sector. Great. Uh, this uh, discussion was really insightful, Apurva. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and, you know, share coming in always like always you come in and give your uh, insights to us uh, we'll touch base again uh, with that we come to the end of this session do share your feedback with us don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel and community portal for more such insightful sessions thank you and take care